It's Friday afternoon, July 2nd, 2021. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals, and that is Hurricane Elsa having now moved into the Eastern Caribbean as a Category 1 hurricane. Maximum sustained wind, 85 miles an hour. The motion remains steady to the west, rapidly at 30 miles an hour. What that means is overall rainfall will be limited, not to say it won't be heavy, but it also means that it has less of a chance to really strengthen. Notice all those clouds over islands like Guadalupe, Martinique, back to Barbados. They are still getting the rain and tropical storm force winds from that system. As far as we are concerned on the central Gulf Coast, my focus area, this system is 2,000 miles away. That means it's a long way from certainty as to what it may be if it reaches our location. You saw the winds gusting to 105 miles an hour. Notice multiple computer models taken through the Caribbean this weekend and then toward Florida either going to Florida, east of it, west of it. One model goes into the Gulf of Mexico. It's not to say it's the latest model. Sometimes one is left over from a previous set of models, which is overall the reason why we look at the big picture, not just any one of those. But if you focus on any one of them, keep in mind, accuracy for location, very similar to that of the National Hurricane Center. The farther out in time you go, the more east or west or left or right of those tracks, the storm could actually end up. For the official National Hurricane Center forecast, once you get over four days, you could be off by 200 miles if you're picking a single point, and that's a really critical thing to know. It's no different from sports. If you play football, basketball, you name it, if you have a target and you're close to it, it's easier to reach that target. The more you step back, going from the three three point line to the center court area, the more likely you're going to miss your target. And if you do that a lot and you average out where that ball ends up, you end up with a bigger circle. And that's the circle that leads to the forecast forecast cone. In terms of wind, that's another issue. When you're closer to a system approaching, the wind error is lower. But once you get three, four, five days out, you could easily be off in the wind projection by 10, 15, even 20 miles an hour. And all of that plays into the forecast cone that you commonly see, which is just for the center of the storm. Notice by Saturday, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, could be looking at a hurricane making landfall, followed by Jamaica. Even if it doesn't make landfall, it is going to impact those islands where they already have warnings and watches posted. Even though rain will not be extreme, in the mountains, rain will be higher, producing maybe deadly flooding, simply because the air hits the mountains, it rises, humidity goes to 100%, and more water falls from the sky. Cuba is going to play a big role in terms of how strong this system may be if it gets into the Gulf of Mexico versus taking a more easterly turn heading toward the Caribbean or the east coast of Florida. So you saw the wind projection, 80, 85 miles an hour, lowering as it interacts with land. And that's just one factor. It's not just the land that can cause a storm to weaken. It has to do with the atmosphere and the water temperature. But here's where our issues are for the central Gulf Coast. If it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's likely to be a weaker system. But if it spends more time over water, taking a more westerly track, those numbers could easily be higher. Obviously, if it hits Florida, wind speed may not increase much, but it's going to be a big deal for Florida. And note that that's midday Tuesday. That is midday Wednesday. If you focus on midday Wednesday, the fifth day out, a perfect forecast would have it right there in the center of that cone. But remember I said it could be off by a couple hundred miles in any direction. So for example, Wednesday, it could be into South Carolina or it could be out over the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic Ocean. If it comes in more slowly, it could be over central Florida on Wednesday. And the worst case for the NBC 15 area centered on Mobile Bay is that it takes more of a westerly track. This circle covers two thirds of the error, not all scenarios. So it is possible the center of the storm could be outside this circle and that's why we watch it very closely. It's why we have to keep up with all tropical systems. Notice the rain projection in the next five days going through Wednesday afternoon shows that brightest red basically across Florida. That's four, five, six inches of rain. That is the most current uh, and most likely scenario. Also notice it's not too far off from what you'll likely get on the Texas coast, which is not from the storm. And that's to say that a fast moving tropical system does not usually drop extreme rain, but still that could produce flooding. 
This is a part of the country, the Gulf Coast, southeast, where we're not concerned about lack of rainfall. Out west is where the problem is, extreme drought situation. And back to the sports analogy, play basketball. We are at halftime for 2021. And at halftime, here are the numbers. Along the I-10 corridor from east to west, Jacksonville, Florida, typical rainfall. Mobile running about 11 inches above average. New Orleans running about 18 inches above average. The first number is the actual rain. The second number would be normal or typical rain for this time of year. Once you get toward Houston, though, average. But look at Tucson, Arizona. Typical rain would be three inches. They've only had one. Los Angeles, typical rain would be eight inches. It's only been three. So that's why there's a big drought, a long-term drought continuing in the desert southwest. Now for the NBC 15 area, we go into our weekend. Rain coverage not very high in the morning. It does go to 50% in our afternoons. But notice if you're at the beaches on the northern Gulf Coast, Rain coverage could be more like 60% simply because even though there's some dry air trying to come in from the north, it's going to stall. And that means you're more likely to get wet along our coastline in the afternoon than you are in our inland counties. That is noon on Saturday. Notice the clouds drifting toward the Gulf. Late afternoon, a few thunderstorms are going to pop up. But again, highest rainfall likelihood closer to the coast. It's not a lot different as we go from Saturday night into Sunday. It's not to say you won't get a shower inland, but while you sleep before sunrise Sunday, there could be some thunderstorms literally right at the beaches. So just keep up with the forecast both locally this weekend and with what is going on in the tropics. One o'clock Sunday afternoon. So on the central Gulf Coast every day, there will be some wet weather as we go through the weekend. About 50% coverage for the NBC 15 area on average to start the weekend. That'll be mostly near the coast. Notice it goes down on Sunday. We get a bit of a break, but our mystery is going to be between Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, depending upon whatever Elsa does, where it goes, and what it is by the time it gets close to our area. I'm NBC 15 Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.